Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. The discovery of the Pandora Gates was a major milestone for transhumanity in the years following the fall. While immensely dangerous and not well understood, the exploration of distant moons and planets is booming. Being a gate crasher is the new hot adventurous career everyone is dreaming of pursuing. Follow Becker playing Whisper, Joaquin playing Shrike and Slavic playing Spike on their first in exploration of a tunnel system on the planet Jetai. This scenario is available under the name Better on the Inside and uses the Eclipse Phase 2nd Edition rules, both licensed to Post Human Studios. Look for Twin CDs by Night on Twitter and Facebook to stay up to date with our releases. There, you'll also find an invite link to our Discord chat. We'd love to see you. If you'd like to support us financially, you can do so on Patreon at Twin Cities by Night. So, during break time, Slavic brought something up. How did these aliens manage without oxygen? This um, atmosphere is 99% nitrogen. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, you wanted to press on, but there's a problem. This room doesn't have any other exits. Oh, fuck. I check for secret doors. <laughs> no. Uh, all right. Roll perceive minus 30. Uh, all right. Let me see if I have anything that might help me. Uh, would my laid- LIDAR actually help me? So it scans the area with laser light and measures the reflections and images the target. I think your LIDAR doesn't... Uh, doesn't penetrate through any covers, not even like thin veils. So uh, no, I guess, but it, it it like scans the target. So if there's any like irregularities in the surface, all right, yeah, would, that's fair. I, so I would say perceive minus ten. All right, all right. That doesn't matter though. Uh, I rolled a seventy-two and I have a fifty. Yeah, that's a. A pretty gnarly failure. So you just want to return. That's yeah, it. This, I didn't find anything. <clears throat> Would radar go through it, or I think you have a thing, but it's not radar. <laughs> no, my drone has radar. Oh, mm, again, I think that doesn't penetrate anything. Yeah, it, it's about reflecting stuff. So yeah, if it was just a shut door, it would just show the door, but wouldn't show the. Oh, yeah. All right. So we're in a. Empty room with no well, only one door entrance back. Can I use a team emitter? I would say yes. So just perceive roll. Yeah. I got a hundred. Lucky bastard. Yeah, you definitely find the secret doorway. <laughs> Is there a secret yeah. doorway? Yes. <laughs> oh good, yay. Exactly opposite of the one you came through. Um you can find with your T-ray emitter that there's like a fitted stone. So the wall is polished, as I mentioned. So you you can hardly see it. Uh, it's rubbed down basically with like dusty stuff and it covers it covers the seam. But with your T-ray emitter, you can definitely tell, yeah, there's a long hallway behind there, just like the one you just came through. And since you activated it, um, you also scanned all the pots that you haven't opened so far. Now you can say for sure, yeah, there's there's like a protein-rich material in there. It's very likely some sort of food. So can I just open the door like with my ha- with this, my bare hands or have have some kind of like tool f- to open it? Uh, give me a straight somatics check. In fact, you're the right one to do that. I think uh, that means um, on your sheet you have a base score and then three times that score. Give me the three times score. I say. As a skill check. 81 out of 60. Yeah, the stone slab doesn't budge. All right, can I spend a somatic a vigor to flip the numbers around? I would say yes. All right, so that's one vigor down, brings me down to five. So that's 18 out of 60. So with that, your first attempt was kind of miserable, but you're not kind of person to just give up so you actually give it your all a rage helps 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you push it um, with all your might, and it gives in at some point, like falls inwards into the hallway, and you can crawl over it. And here I was getting my plasma torch ready. <laughs> Excellent. All right, so is there like a big rush of air when the door opens, or is it... Not really. Like, there is no, there's no positive or negative pressure in either direction. Okay. But speaking of which, your muse, Orianne, alerts you that the oxygen level in the in the atmosphere, or at least in the surrounding area, seems to be slowly rising ever so slowly like before you had a 99 percent nitrogen atmosphere and the rest was a mixture of gases now you have like a noticeable like 0.5 percent oxygen still very low you couldn't breathe it but it's definitely more than before can i like ask my mules to calculate see like how long it would take before it would reach breathable i think it's a she (laughs) she would return that it's uncertain because it's uncertain how the um, where the oxygen source is and ah okay if it depletes if it's the planet's atmosphere, so it's it's not certain. Got it. So I'll guess uh, I'll take the point lead and just sort of go down the uh, new tunnel. Spike follows with whisper bringing up the rear. All right. So this tunnel leads upwards, and along the way it splits. So you reach a point where it either goes further upwards or you can take a turn to go a little bit downwards again. The whole hallway is covered in paintings again, and these seem to be arranged in some sort of like procession. It has a definite like ritualistic ceremonial vibe, and it's very sexual. Like you have a feeling like this uh, species had like an orgy ceremony. So you have like a procession where first you have like ceremonial fighting and then apparently all the winning warriors or whatever, they take off their armor and it all ends in this in this great orgy. Interesting. I turn the whispers. Does this make sense to you? And it doesn't look like it... Stylistically, it matches the other room, but the other room was just a general, almost societal thing, whereas this is about a very specific thing. It's taking a a long moment, like he's stroking, well, we have face masks on, is that right? Okay, so he can't really stroke his beard, but he'll stroke his uh, face mask. (laughs) Do the paintings go both up and down, or does it stop at the split? Uh, No, they are... All along the way, in fact, it seems both ways, like both parts of the split. Okay. I suppose this wouldn't be necessarily unusual. Some cultures value that sort of stuff. Um, I know I failed the earlier role, but with the, with the new context, can I figure out anything else? Do you have anything that would be like more sociological? The previous role you failed was something about biology, I think. Gotcha. Um, This goes to anyone in the group. Like, if you have anything that you would think applies here, just suggest it. I don't have anything for that. Yeah, honestly, I don't really see anything either. Whisper with your first context uh, knowledge, I would say. You already said all you know. With some cultures... uh, do it this way, wink, wink, nudge, nudge. But that's about it. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, Shrike. I'm not really getting much more from this. Which tunnel, which direction do you want to go, up or down? Down. Very well. And again, like Shrike will lead off in the front and uh, let whoever's behind follow. All right. So you venture down again. And the hallway abruptly ends in another fitted stone that blocks the way through, probably to another chamber. All right. Uh, Prike will again try to push this one down. You immediately get the feeling like this one is even heavier than the first one. And just as a suggestion, you can uh, try to do this in teamwork. And then basically the one with the highest rating rolls and gets bonus 
uh, values for the rest. All right, Whisper, what's your somatic? It's 45. Same. 64, uh, Shrike. Yeah. In that case, I would say, Shrike, you can roll the somatics at a minus 10. It used to be minus 30. Oh, yay. So that be put at 50. Okay, so target's 50. Nope, I got a 94. All right, I'll spend the vigor again to switch that around to 49. Nice. So with combined effort, with all your combined effort, in fact, you managed to push a large boulder out of this uh, opening and it rolls and falls into, well, the largest chamber yet and definitely the most decorated and um, arranged. What you see in front of you are 24, like, slabs of like a um, like an ebony colored material they look carved uh, they are arranged in like a circle and each slab has another uh, dead but mostly preserved six leg simian on it and you can easily tell like these probably were some important figures in their society they have a huge amount of jewelry around them. Some have like tools of their trade. You uh, can guess like one of them probably made clothing. They have a bunch of what you would describe as cloth around them, but it looks and feels a bit different than cloth that you, you're used to. Um, one of them probably was the painter, or at least one of the painters. The scorps is surrounded with like little pots of dyes and colors and so on and so on. Uh, in the middle of this large room is another uh, pot. This one isn't covered in any waxy material. It seems to be made of carved stone as well. And it's really large, like it's about waist height and about the same in diameter. The, I turned to whisper, did these die as uh, the same thing as the other, as the guards did? I will go in and expect. Although my gut tells me no. Uh, give me your medicine test again. And I mean, obviously to all of you, all the bodies or corpses, they seem to be very different from one another. Like the two guards, they, are, they were basically the same to you. These, you can definitely tell, have different body types, different ages. In fact, many of the corpses seem to be of what you think were children, as they are much smaller. Yeah, are they still the same species? Oh, yeah. They are all these six-legged simians. I got a 20 out of 45 on my paramedic roll. All right. So, like, four bodies are outright. You can't really tell anything, because um, even though they are uh, mummified, they kind of, like, collapse on these slabs that they were... Uh, well, this plate on, so they're broken now, so you, you can't really tell. With all of the children, um, you get the feeling they died from some sort of disease. Like this time, you can see remnants of like maybe uh, boils or something on their skin. Yeah, and about like five of the other ones, um, they seem to uh, all have died from like blunt, brutal attacks like blunt force attacks so these have been killed they haven't died from some sort of natural cause the ones that were killed are they also displayed or are they just around in the room trying to get a sense of like did combat happen in this room or no they are also displayed okay okay on some of the bodies you find that organs have been removed and at that point uh, when a uh... So presumably, Whisper shares this. Mm -hmm. uh, Shrike will go. This doesn't like the Egyptians did something like this. Like they bury the king or whatever, and like have a whole bunch of other stuff with him. Yeah, that's that's correct. Is hmm. that what this is? Do you think like a burial chamber thing, like pyramid thing? Well, yeah, it's definitely a crypt. Is there one body in particular that stands out more than the others? That I might... would say no. Okay. 
you can definitely tell they were different kinds of traits or you know the children they they definitely like they didn't have a trait but the, the society felt it was important to like display them this way and with the rest of them too because they were important to these to these well aliens gotcha you're not well, really sure if whether one stands out but all of them seem to be stand out given the different mixes here i don't think it's it's not quite like the egyptians where you know maybe there's one prominent pharaoh uh, they all seem to have importance of different standings so I think this. I think we're just in a crypt of some sort, and this is their burial rites. So that's why they're all dead. Well, that's why all the ones in here are dead. <laughs> yeah, they seem so that- to have different um, death cause of death than the two that we passed by earlier. Suicide, perhaps, like uh, some kind of maybe like they were supposed to like guard the dead or something. Mm-hmm. Who knows? And the question is, are there, if we once we get out of here, are we going to? <laughs> find a whole bunch of angry natives that we desecrated their de- their crypts. At that point, you could definitely see like her hands like twitch again, like the anticipation of maybe like fighting something. Oh, fighting an entire alien race. <laughs> could those two have died because of replacing oxygen with nitrogen in the atmosphere? It's possible. You want to give me another astrobiology test? Sure thing. We got a 30 out of 75. Right. So the nitrogen and the cold temperature is probably what preserved them. Because nitrogen really isn't all that reactive. And at the same time, you think this amount of nitrogen like doesn't really combine with a life form that is this advanced. I mean, there are probably um, some weird uh, cases where oxygen isn't required, but some other fuel source is used, but you definitely need the fuse, fuel source still to like function. And nitrogen doesn't work, at least not from what you know. Okay. So the nitrogen suffocating them is quite a possibility as looking at things and kind of poking at him while he's saying this. I believe that they probably breathe oxygen. So is there a secret t- secret tunnel entrance in this room as well? Well, there's a large pot in the middle that you haven't looked at. All right, D-ray emitter on the pot. Right, so uh, actually give me a perception check. Okay, 100 again. So you scan through the thing. What you find is it has a hard outside shell. Inside there is a cavity uh, on the bottom of it, and there is... Uh, what you think is some sort of gel and uh, above it is well emptiness the gel seems to have clotted a couple of holes that are drilled in the bottom getting a bit closer you uh, find that the whole thing has a strong uh, scent it's uh, kind of like fruity honey like mixes weirdly with like the dusty smell uh, you find with your scan that this thing is under very large pressure. Like there is a gas buildup above this gel that can't escape because the holes are plugged. So this is some kind of, I don't know if it's just because of the, over the years it's like rotted and like the pressure was built up in it, but it's must've been like some kind of gel thing, uh, maybe a preserve and then it just rotted and it's under a lot of pressure. So if we like broke it, it burst open with a lot of force. Since you had such a high success on a perceive, I'll give you another thing. Glancing over the the corpses, you find that a few of them have something that you think are eggs inside of them, like in weird places, like in their appendages. How, like, how big eggs? Like little eggs or L- like golf ball size? Mm-hmm. I'm uh, sure that we have others. Ah, oh, disgusting. We should probably take a couple of, like for samples. I agree. Does our xenobiologist think? Ah, uh, I mean, it's not quite what I do, but um, I'm interesting, interesting about these eggs. These just don't seem like the kind of race that would that would come from eggs. Hmm. Um. Well, anyway, 
You want to gather the samples yourself or leave it to my robotic hands? <laughs> yeah, I'll gather them. Especially keeping, like, in the back of Whisper's minds, like, yeah, not a delicate person, Spike. <laughs>, Laughs in demolition. <laughs>, <laughs> okay. So I'm assuming this is the sort of thing that we're, we're trying to collect for gate crashing. Oh, yeah, oh, definitely. Okay. Yeah, we're just going to find out everything we can possibly know. Gotcha. Yeah, you are interested in all kinds of artifacts samples of plant and animal life in fact if it's living that's even better bring what you can grab <laughs> gotcha. yeah, I, sp- I suppose we should grab some uh, samples of the simian species as well i'll just i'll just put a corpse on my robo mule you can take one of the children they're smaller <laughs> uh, I'll, I, I guess I, I should honestly take the guard because they're well preserved. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So as you're packing things up and cutting things up, you are pretty sure there's some sort of like motion between all the slabs and items that are in this chamber. But like there's some something co- moving between the or the left la- yeah. slabs are moving. No, no, something is moving. Some little thing. Okay, drone out. <laughs> Let's activate the radar. So looking around, you find there there is like a somewhat lethargic um, rodent-like thing. Also has six legs and has three tails. It's very fluffy. It's like a long nose and sniffs a bunch of things. I turned out it was like living vermin at the, 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 the his labs, a shirt on the tech net. Catch it right. alive or dead. Alive would be more useful, but keeping it alive in our atmosphere might be difficult back home. But, you know. Agreed. Alive. Be great. Oh, that'd be a nice payday. All right. So I'm gonna, it's going to like sort of like start to circle around the uh, little rodent thing and like gesture for the others to circle around from the other side. And I'm going to try to cat- grab it once we get like, surround it. Yeah, right now. It uh, appears to have just, like, woken up to you. Like, it's um, walking kind of funny. As I said, it seems a bit lethargic. You're not sure whether it's healthy. You really can't tell, but it's super easy to catch. Like, it doesn't even resist, like, at all. All right. So, yeah, I guess I put in, like, some boxing that we probably have somewhere for samples. That proves to be a bit difficult. Like, it holds onto you. Like, can I get it off? <laughs> yes, sure, but it's like a cat that really doesn't want to move. Oh, what was I going to thought it was say? And then it melts into, your, into my armor, it just like goes off the thing on me. Oh, no. That comes later. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, do I have to make a roll to put it in like a box or something? <laughs> no, no, I'm just describing what it does. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> well, yeah, you're, making me, you're making me nervous now. Good. <laughs> <laughs> like, it sniffs around. Doesn't seem to like the metallic things you're surrounded with. Yeah, but it liked you. Well, well, that's definitely going to be a bonus for us. Shall we go out and check out? Shall we go investigate the other tunnel? Yeah. Yeah. There's no other way out of this room, just the door that we came through? Not that you see. Okay. <laughs> I'm not the person to check for that, so. Okay, one, uh, the one last check around we use the T-ray emitter. Oh, I got a 77. Is that a success or a failure? Wait, so for perceive, that's uh, that's a 77 out of 70. That's a critical failure. Right, so you scan the room. You look around. You're not really sure. You're scanning the, the slabs as well. And suddenly you feel that the thing you just put down, the rodent thing, it climbed up your leg. And it stings you with one of its tails. Does it breach the uh, a suit? It does, and it deals one whole damage. That's not too bad, I guess. Wait, one damage? Is, no, that's not bad, yeah. That's not a wound. It also does another thing. Oh no, what? I thought um, I put it in a box! <laughs> <laughs> it, I don't know what's the right word. It transports a psychoactive drug into your system. Injects, I think, would be a good word. Yeah, that's a good word. I was looking for that. 
And within the next few minutes, the upsides are you can plus 10 to all your perceived roles. You also gain another enhanced behavior trait. What? Um, you gain a protective level three for the rodent thing. Ah. Imagine you are level three uh, blood bonded to it. I think that's... So I'm going to defend it with my life. I got it. <laughs> yes. Sounds like a normal pet owner. So yes, I go full golem, just like sort of just like grab the thing and I like, hold it protectively against my chest <laughs> until the other two was like, "We're not taking this back. They might, they might hurt it." There's just mild confusion on uh, Whisper's face as, ah, okay, yeah, sure, I guess. Do I have any food for it? I think I might be hungry. Yeah, we not we gotta toss it on the mule. No, no, no! I can't do that. No, no, I can't. I might hurt it. Uh, I, uh, I just turned like I turned like start to like look for my stuff for like any kind of food or something, which I probably don't have because we're not supposed to breathe the air. Uh, you actually have an auto cook. Oh yeah, actually I do. Yeah. yeah. It's like a thing to produce rations. Oh uh, yeah, I immediately start setting it up and like start sh- trying like you know random foods for the rat to eat. Please don't. We don't want to disturb anything in this place. Shut up. I, 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 I have to help it. Let me see that wound. Whisper. It is just, it is very small. It, it, it only penetrated the, the uh, nothing more than pinprick. Yeah, the, the suit probably healed itself over the, the puncture. All right. Okay. You wouldn't even be able to tell where it was. You're acting really strange, Shrek. It might seem strange to you, but I have to do this. I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to, I have to. What does your muse say about your current behavior? What does it say? Yeah, so Orion is just like, uh, is everything all right? I mean, the thing is kind of cute, but... I, I, I just have to protect it. I have to. Don't you, I just, I have to. Why? And you see, like, there's like a, like a struggle in her brain. Just, just like, does not compute for several minutes. All right, I, I'm, I I'm booking an appointment with either a psychosurgeon or maybe like a morph designer. I think... I think something's a bit gone wrong here. Maybe it's the stress with the with the gate crashing. Whatever just, it is, I, I, just as long as as long as they don't take it away from you, that's, that's fine. I don't care. Okay, whatever. Try to relax a little bit. No one is taking it away from you. Uh, and it's just you cannot go. Yeah, I wouldn't let you. Yeah, she just sort of like you know, just just sort of goes into like her own little corner and just starts tending to it. Okay, well, so I guess there's no right. So we just go back the way we came. Yeah, and this time, instead of leaning from the front, Shrike hangs back with the little rat thing, crazily shielding it from any harm. So you are going back into the hallway, back to the split section? That is correct. And you want to go up the path you haven't explored yet? Correct. All right. So this one ends again in like a stone slab that you have to push out. All right, Shrike, you're up. No, I, I, can't, I, I can't risk it. I might hurt the... I have to protect this first. That's all right. You can still have it on you, but we still need to push the slab. And after like a moment of hesitation, she... All right, then she sort of like just pushes it, pushes it with her back, and sort of like still cradling the rat thing in her arms. So you want to push the, the stone? Yes. Uh, where's everyone standing right now? I feel like I'd be standing behind Shrike. I same because previously we were using all three of us to help out with the pushing. Yeah. Okay, Shrike, give me a somatics plus twenty, please. All right, forty-three out of eighty. All right, this this one is much easier than the last the last two, in fact. But as you push it in and it gives way from the ceiling gushes out like um, silvery black smoke. It's extremely hot. and Does it hurt the rat? Yes. <laughs> to all biomorphs <laughs> no. and the rat thing, it deals uh, 2d10 as damage, but you can have that can with I... a successful fray. So I'll roll fray, please, and I roll for the rat thing. It's just for biomorphs, right? Correct. Suckers <laughs> with their the, feelings and the rodent doesn't touch. have fray. 
can I, uh, can I shield the rodent with my body since it's so important to Shrike? Oh, don't, don't help me in this, please. <laughs> <laughs> Shrike is clearly first. You, you can't do yeah, shit. I, I made a 38 out of 80. <laughs> oh, God. I got an 81 out of 50. I feel you whisper. Ooh. So, uh, whisper, uh, you get the full six damage. I rolled low. Uh, Shrike, you get three damage. I don't think for either of you that's enough to cause a wound. Actually, let me check for Whisper. No, it doesn't. Yeah, okay. So you just note down six damage and it's fine. The red thing, though, it has a a wound threshold of one, a durability of five, and a death rating of seven. So in other words, it's kind of cooked alive. But... (laughs) Barely Dead? holding on. <laughs> Barely <laughs> holding on. And that poor age. It's just unconscious. Like, no! no! And then she like just desperately like scrambling for like her healing spray and just like sprays all over the rat thing. You actually uh, suffer 1d6 in stress uh, damage. So that's um, that's not on your morph part. That is for your lucidity. Yeah, I have a lucidity of 20 and a trauma threshold of 4. All right. So did I just roll the 1d6? Yes, correct. Got a 2. That's good because it means you only lose 2 lucidity and you don't exceed your f- trauma threshold because that would have been uh, kind of bad. <laughs> Getting traumatized over a rat. <laughs> Gate crasher problems. Also, was it an hour since the cave in? Yes, probably. Okay, I'll roll for my medicines. While he's doing that, does the healing spray work on the rat thing? It probably does, but I'm not sure if it works immediately. All right. So yeah, the rodent thing definitely needs medical attention. Maybe, Shrike, you can actually take it back through the through the gate. Maybe that is a good idea. Maybe they can save it. Okay, yeah, at that point, Shrike will just be like, oh, okay, I stabilized it for now, but I gotta, I gotta go back, I gotta go back. Also ahead of you is the opening into another chamber. Shrek, the gate's not open. Uh, then I'll wait. I'll, I'll just go there and I'll wait. Please, Shrek, <sighs> I have some hash if you want to introduce it into your respirator. No, 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 no. I, 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 I have no time for this. I have to, I have to save this. I have to. Oh, okay, Shrek, Shrek, hey, hey, hey. Why don't I take a look at it? See right, if yes, I just, can help. I do yes. have some skills. Yes, just save it. Save it, please, please, please save it. I just sent her a message. Uh, send Whisper a message. Please euthanize it. I'm assuming that's a private message, in which case I was... Yeah, exactly. He's like, yeah, I was already thinking about that. This will end badly, but I think it's for the best. Oh, hello again, folks. I'd like to tell you about the Facebook group we run called White Wolf and Onyx Path RPGs Gameplay and Media. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded? One that won't be drowned out by random posts and discussions so that your media could give the attention you deserve. The group is specifically run with the sole intent of being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. The group is already immense and continuing to rapidly grow, with new media being shared every day. Stop on by, we hope to see you there.